Hi everybody. Today I'd like to knock out um, just a few things. Um, firstly, I want to install the um, T3 uh, front signals on my hand guards. Um, that'll probably be the, the most complicated job I do today. Um, then I would like to um, connect the dial dim controller to the battery. I'm not actually going to mount the controller anywhere yet because I'm, I'm unsure of where I'm going to do that. And um, then I would like to start uh, plugging in um, the Pan America specific wiring harness to just a few locations just to kind of get that started. Um, I don't plan on zip tying anything down yet. Um, I like to do that at the end once I've had a chance to dry fit the lowers and the um, skid plate. And once I get everything in with a dry fit, then I'll start locking stuff down. And with that, let's get going. So I'm here at the bottom of the bike uh, at the battery and my plan is to connect the dial dim controller here to the battery today. I'm not going to mount this um, for a few reasons, uh, but the, the main reason is if you watch the Denali install video on a Pan America, they have on their motorcycle all this space just to the side of the uh, positive lead, it's all open and they just stick it in, in here. Um, you can see here, I have this plastic container here. I don't know what's in it, um, but it takes up all the space. So I do not have the free space um, that they have in their video. So I've kind of looked at my options here and I can always mount this right here on this piece. I could take off this sticky label and clean it up really good and use a thick double-sided foam that I have that I use and uh, I could mount this here, and that um, foam tape I, I use is really strong, so I'm sure it would work as far as holding it goes, but this looks kind of ugly. Um, this shows a little bit through the, um, the vents on the um, skid plate once it's put on, and it just doesn't look great. It doesn't look clean. Um, on the other hand, my other uh, option is to mount it just under here. I don't know if you can barely see it on camera, but um, underneath this, there's a big flat spot and it's part of the, um, like the battery box that the battery's in. And this can mount here and it feels like there's a, a big space for purchase for that foam tape I was talking about. And then also the wires are already headed in that direction. So I could um, hopefully just route them up the lower. So I'm kind of leaning towards doing this, um, but I'm not committed to either one at the moment. I just want to connect this today with these leads um, and when you do this, know that on the positive lead, there is a uh, inline fuse uh, right here. So what you have to do is just pop open the fuse holder and it's in there tight. Take out the fuse and put it aside. And you want to connect the leads um, without the fuse in there. And then once you have everything retightened back up and they're on the battery, um, go ahead and pop the fuse back in and you'll be good to go. And just to... Uh, FYI, the, um, the bolts here and the leads are 10 millimeters. So I'm using a 10 millimeter uh, ratchet right here. And when you take it off, oh shoot, I already have it loose. Um, when you take it off, be sure to start with the positive and then the negative, and then put them back in reverse order. So I'm gonna connect the um, dial dim controller right now. Okay, so I have the two leads connected. They went in easy peasy. Here is the little inline fuse mount, fuse holder. So I'm going to put the fuse in there. It's in. Let's cap it up and we're all set. So I will just leave this kind of hanging on the ground for now and we'll worry about mounting it later. Next is drilling holes into my hand guards. Um, I'm just going to drill one hole um, on each hand guard. And that hole is for this uh, center wire here. Uh, we need to be able to run this through the hand guard. And what I did here uh, to test what size hole I should try, or uh, I should drill, I did a test hole here in this little scrap piece of wood I have. This is a um, half inch hole I made with a spade bit. And you can see here that the plug fits in there perfectly. Actually, there's, there's extra room. And let me pull this all the way through so you can see. So with a half inch hole, there's still plenty of uh, room for uh, adjustment up and down and left and right. 
and the body of the light covers the whole fine. So you should have no issues if you're just a tiny bit off where you want to um, drill that hole because you have room to adjust. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, drill a very small pilot hole and then I'm going to do a 3 8 inch hole and I think that should do it. And if that's not quite large enough, then I'll go up to the half an inch. And also the hardware that comes with it to secure the light against the handguard in these little side holes, those are screws. Um, so there's no drilling uh, a hole first for those. I'm just going to go ahead and screw them in by hand and let them uh, grip the handguard. If they don't hold it tight enough for me, um, I'll probably replace them with uh, machine bolts you can get at Lowe's. Um, but for now, I think uh, I'm just going to go with the screws and hopefully they'll be nice and tight. So let's Alrighty then, let me go ahead and drill this hole. So this is my pilot hole. I'm using a very small bit. Um, this is a 5 30 seconds bit and uh, I have um, one of my um, wood bits with the point at the top so that way um, it doesn't wander a lot when I start the hole. So, boy, my eyes are not the best. Let's see. That was extremely easy. Okay, so there's the initial pilot hole. All right, so let's go ahead and drill that hole a little bit bigger. Um, this is a 3 8 inch bit. Let me put it in the center there. I feel secure. Okay, so let me try to clean out that hole a little bit and do it again. Perfect, look at that. Perfect hole. There's not a whole lot of um, plastic um, uh, pieces sticking out. Perfect, so now I'm going to go ahead and see if the T3 plug will fit through that. No, not quite. So the next bit up is the half an inch, so I'm gonna have to jump up to the half an inch. Well, uh, I had to step up to my larger drill in order to get the um, half inch uh, bit to fit. Uh, but luckily I have this, and I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge this hole now to half an inch. And when you go through there, be careful you don't hit your um, uh, handle on the other side because I just tapped at the top of my handle. It looks fine, but be aware of that. Just go in a little bit <laughs> if you can. Okay, so I brought the camera a little bit closer so you could see better. And you can see here that the plug fits right in that hole. Perfect. So half an inch bit was the way to go. And then this just fits um, right over the hole and you can adjust it up or down. Um, when I first started measuring, um, and you can use whatever method you want, I used a very small metal ruler. Um, I was actually measuring to place the um, light in the center of the, um, the hand guard, which would put it kind of like that. And then I went back and reviewed the uh, Denali video, and I saw that they had the um, lights uh, very close to this um, kind of curvature in the um, hand guard. And I liked the way that looked, so I redid my um, uh, measurement to bring the T3 closer to where the handguard curves here. So that's uh, just a personal choice. And I believe because it's closer to, to this that it's actually more visible to um, oncoming cars too. So, uh, so time to start the uh, screws to fasten this to the handguard. On the T3s, uh, one side, I don't know if you can see that on camera because of the glare, um, but it will say Denali on one side of the light. So I have mine um, positioned so the Denali is facing up and you could read it um, from above. And I'm going to just adjust this light how I want it. I'm gonna keep mine a little bit more towards the top edge. That actually looks pretty good right there. And this part I'm just gonna kinda of do by eyeball. And my eyeballs aren't that great, but I think this looks as we say, uh, good enough for government work. So I've got that there. And I've got my drill 
on the very lowest setting because I do not want to uh, strip this out. I don't want to strip out the, um, the head of the screw or the plastic. So I'm going to go very slowly. My goal is just to get this started. Okay, so that's in there just a little bit. It's still very loose. I had my drill on the slow setting, which is one, and um, I had the uh, speed at three, and that was enough just to get it going. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to continue that uh, by hand. Let me see if I could do that. Okay. So I've switched over just to a, a screwdriver, and it's a Phillips uh, head. That's what uh, these screws are, they're Phillips heads. So let me try to... See if I can continue by hand. I don't expect it to be easy because this plastic is thick. But I thought I'd give it a shot. It sure would be nice if it would continue to grip. I can feel the um, tip of the screw wanting to, aha, it broke through the other side. I could just feel it with my fingertip. So let me just go lightly now because it's, Screwing in and gripping. Go nice and slow. Okay, it's still loose. Okay, you know what? That's still loose. I'm going to um, leave it loose and do the other one now. That was not too difficult. So I'm going to. All right, I put the second one in with the uh, drill. And let me go ahead and tighten the rest by hand. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's plastic, so you don't want to do it super tight, but you can feel a firm grip. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. What's there? Okay. So those are very good and tight. And um, like I said, if I should feel that they're stripping at any point in time, I'll just um, replace them with... Um, machine bolt and a, um, a nut on the back. Um, it's a, there's, there's a lot of small common sizes that would fit those holes at Lowe's and Home Depot. So I'm gonna show you the other side here. Stand by one moment. Here we are on the um, other side of the handguard. You can see the um, hole coming out here. And then my plan is as I run the wires uh, back towards the um, handlebars and then down the neck, I'm going to go ahead and use some of those um, 3M um, zip tie tie downs, the tie down anchors, as I go to um, just kind of keep this clean, keep the wires against the handguard. And I I'm going to go ahead and clean with an alcohol swab inside of here. Get it nice and clean. Probably use a few alcohol swabs because that was pretty dirty. And I will let that dry and then we'll put on these 3M uh, zip tie anchors. So these are the little 3M anchors I was talking about. You put a little zip tie through here and it'll hold any type of cable down or excuse me any type of wire. Here we go. So I'm gonna put this one right, and right there should be good. And then, I'm gonna put another one about right here. The reason I'm not putting it like right here, which is where I would prefer, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's like a, um, it looks like it was injected molded right here and there's like a little ridge of um, plastic and I don't think it will hold long term right there. So I'm gonna go right next to it, which is right there. There we go. Press that in there. 
Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. And now I will let these dry for a minute or two. Then I'll attach um, the zip ties and uh, pull this cable down. I finished tidying up the um, T3s on my hand guards and the wiring. And although in the beginning of this video I said I probably wouldn't be um, locking down any zip ties in their final uh, spots until um, the end, I decided it was best uh, with these to go ahead and um, tighten them down now. So this is the right side. You could see that um, I have them tied down here to these little anchors with zip ties. They hold really nice. Um, and then this particular wire, I've um, run it down here. This is it here. I got a zip tied here. And then it's going to go, it's going to follow this larger um, bundle of electrical wires down. And let me see if I can get you a good view. So this is it. It's following this big bundle down. I got a zip tied here. And then the, um, the bundle of wiring goes down in this, let me get a better view, here we go, down in this hole um, in the center of the frame. But I, and I tried routing this in the same direction. And what I like about this is it doesn't pinch wires in here, uh, but there's not enough slack to get through there and make it um, to the point it needs to connect. So this is just gonna simply come under here along the side of this um, center um, piece of the frame. And it will go, of, of course, um, zip tie it, but it'll just go right in here, right in there. So that's where that's gonna go. And um, I'll show you the other side and give you an idea of what I had to do over there. Here is the left side. Same um, procedure on this side. I have the two uh, tie downs right here holding the uh, wire from the T3. And with this one, let me see if I can get a, a view here. Um, this is it right here. I have it zip tied. Have it zip tied right here. And then it comes down. Let me move this. And then I have it zip tied right here also. I left just a little bit of slack in here so there can be some movement. So zip tied here. And then it is routed down in between the um, left fork there and the uh, center. And this is it right here. So this is it, and it will plug in there. Now you can see this um, plug is different than the regular Harley plug, so I'm gonna start um, putting my adapters on right now so I can connect the um, T3s to the uh, Harley uh, power plugs. Not to. So what I have here is a T3 uh, Pan America um, harness adapter, um, or plug adapter. And um, I don't remember how much these were, but they come in a packet of two. So you can just order them uh, when you order your T3. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and plug this, the white plug, into the white T3 plug. They just go together. Let me see if I can get that on camera. There we go, you can hear that click. So now the adapter's plugged in. And now this is the wiring harness right here. It is marked left turn. And you'll see that the wiring harness has a pass through on one end and the other end is actually the plug. So I'm going to plug the wiring harness directly into <laughs> the Harley plug. So. Let's get this over here and see if I could do this in relative darkness. Okay, I can see where it's gotta go. Try not to hit the camera. I had to change angles with the camera. I was having some difficulties here. So the um T3 adapter plugged right into the T3 itself without any issues. 
now we have you know the pass through and the plug itself and what we want to do is we want to put the plug into the wiring harnesses pass through so what i discovered was that these are really tight i tried removing the little um kind of little rubber piece in the front and um, it really doesn't make a difference they're just really tight at the end when you go to press them in so you have to kind of just listen for that click or feel the click and just push down hard there we go um, it's just it's just super snug it kind of took me by surprise so now we have the t3 into the adapter um, pass through and then um, the uh, adapters plugged into the harness pass through and now we will plug the harness into the um, actual plug in the center here of the Pan America. I don't think I'm going to be able to. So I see where it needs to go. It's an extremely tight fit in here. Let me see, I heard a click, but it might have been my thumbnail. No, I think that was it. Let me give it gentle pressure tug and see. All right, let me check with my light. Double check that. Aha, there's the, the actual click. All right, now that's snug. Okay. Now I am on the right side, and here is the uh, T3 plug, and this is the adapter. So I'm gonna plug that right in. That click, that goes in nice and easy. So next, you can see this is the wiring harness that I pushed through from the other side, and it's marked right turn. And the wiring harness itself is what has to plug into the power supply, so I'm gonna plug the T3 into the pass through here. Let me be prepared to push that in tight. There you go, I think it just clicked. Yeah. Let me press it down hard one more time. Okay, those are in, they're not coming out, but it took a, a lot of pressure to get them to click. And now lastly, we have the plug here from the harness that's gonna uh, plug directly into the uh, Harley Power. You're not gonna be able to see this, I don't think. I'll leave the camera on and we'll see. Oh wow, that clicked in in two seconds. I can't believe it. That was nice. That was much easier than I was anticipating. Okay, so we're all plugged in. Now let's try to test everything out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if these T3s uh, work. Let me come look at the front. Oh yeah, those are really nice and bright. They look good. Wow, it's amazing the uh, light output of these small LEDs. Let me put this here. Okay, so let's do the left turn signal. Oh, that looks good. And now we'll do the right turn signal. Oh yeah. And now we will try the flashers. See how those look. Oh yeah. The visual footprint is definitely uh, bigger. I like that width between the um, T3s. It just makes you look larger from the front visually.
nice, I'm real happy with that. I'm just happy they worked. I wasn't even sure if that would happen you know, with my dodgy installation skills. Um, with that, um, thank you for watching. I'm gonna end it here. And then um, I think in the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put in the um, DM um, running lights that will go on the fender and they will also be um, turn signals. So it'd be nice to see how they look in conjunction when they work together. Um, if you learned anything or if I could help in any way, you know, do me a favor, please hit that um, like uh, or subscribe button. Um, if you are um, really good at working on motorcycles, especially Pan Americas, and you saw things that I could have done more efficiently, please comment and let me know. That way, anybody who, try, who tries to use this video as a guide, they will benefit from um, uh, advice from someone who knows more than I do. Um, and with that, um, I'm going to end it, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.